Well, hello, beautiful friends. Welcome to my channel. It's Sean from Sean K Beauty. And this is Sean K's Beauty Bar, where we grab from the bar and discuss all things beauty. <laughs> So if you're new, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I feature your questions here on my platform, bringing my biochemistry and microbiology to your questions. We discuss everything beauty from skincare to makeup. And on Saturdays, I do fashion and makeup tutorials. I know a lot of you have been asking me to do um, a lot of topics on K-beauty, and I, <laughs> I can only assume that that was spun out of the whole snail mucin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, topic that I talked about some time ago, and that's fine. I will love to cover that. I think Hey Beauty is very intriguing and um, bringing some understanding to that and really bringing some light on some brands that really deserve it. So um, I will be looking forward to doing that. Now today in this video, we want to talk about acne, a deep understanding on acne, the pathophysiology of acne. And I'm bringing not only my biochemistry and microbiology to this topic, um, I'm also bringing the physiology to this topic. All right, my lovely friends. So let's talk about the definitions of some of the sciences that are behind acne so that you have a better understanding of what your acne is and what it's doing. So, okay, so microbiology, which my background is, is a study of microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, how they work, their mechanics. And a lot of my study was heavily in researching how these viruses and bacteria cause diseases in human beings or abnormalities in human beings, their replication, all of that stuff. So that's microbiology, microorganisms, okay? So when we talk about biochemistry, it is the chemical processes that occur in a living organism. So we study the chemical processes. It's the chemistry of the world in its simplest form. Now, when we get into pathology, pathology, again, really simple, abnormal, undesired condition. That's really what it is. An undesired, abnormal condition. Physiology then becomes the study of a bodily function or how a living, living organism functions, right? So then what is acne pathophysiology? Well, if pathology is undesired condition and uh, physiology is the function of that living organism or that uh, bodily part, then pathophysiology is us explaining to you the changes in function that is causing that undesired or abnormal occurrence happening to you. And that's what acne pathophysiology is all about. It's me explaining to you what's happening so that you would know how to purchase the right products for you because now you have a better understanding. Again, we talked about microbiomes, I won't go deep into that, but it's all about balance for them. They really don't care about grabbing products for I'm too oily, I'm too dry. What they care about is balance, finding products between that 4.5 and a 6. Your acidic mantle, if you're a woman, is a 5.5 and should be, and for a man, it is a 5.8. So now let's go to the family room where we're gonna talk like a family, grab your coffee, get some notes, notepads, a pencil if you want to, or just simply sit here and we just go through some diagrams together and get a better understanding on the fundamentals of what's happening with the skin and why acne is occurring, all right? Now, here's the thing. It sounds like a lot, but to anybody who has been with me for a while, Penelope, Deborah, hopefully you guys can vouch for me, Hara, I explain things in a way that it's super duper easy for you to understand. I don't want to get you lost with a lot of scientific terminologies and lingo because it's not beneficial to you and it's not beneficial to me, right? Because if I'm losing the people that I'm trying to bring understanding to, there's no use of me doing a video in the first place. <laughs> I know that everybody's not a scientist, um, but you know, and that's fine. That's why we all work together. We all hold each other's hands, right? 
where I am lacking, I learn from you, and where you are lacking, you you learn from me. So we learn from each other, is what I'm getting at. Okay, so to anybody who's wondering why am I doing this video, here's the thing. I think we all can attest to the many products that are being thrown to us daily, and us buying those many products and still seeing our faces freak out. And here's the problem. When we don't have an understanding of the deep root that is causing the problem, we're going to go in this frenzy of just grabbing the next best thing, hoping that it does something. But when you start having adverse reactions to all the products that you have in your arsenal, and it's that one product that's making the flare up happen or two products, you'll never know because you have so much in your arsenal. So the key then becomes understanding that skincare does not have to be complicated. Skincare can be a beautiful thing if you know what you're doing. So let's get right into this because I'm bringing the science, I'm bringing the understanding, but I also want you to know how to purchase products with information, right? So we're using wisdom when we're buying stuff as opposed to just buying a ton of things. So let's get into the elemental phase of understanding the pore, the follicle, the sebaceous gland, and what it's doing. All right, beautiful friends, a simple diagram with a simple explanation. The pore consists of hair and sebum. The hair follicle is a cavity, a passageway for the hair to grow out of. It's also where sebum travels up to come to the outer layer of the skin, what we call the epidermis, where the pore is. That's when we hear influencers saying they have exacerbated pores. That's on that outmost layer, what you can see with the naked eye. The sebaceous gland lives in the dermis, the innermost layer of the skin, which is under the epidermis. This produces sebum, which is that oily substance that we hear a lot of people saying when they have oily skin. Now, under normal conditions, this is really helpful to you because sebum consists of triglycerides, which are lipids that are hydrophobic. They hate water. Now, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because we are made up of 60% water and the sun wants to pull all that water from us to dehydrate us, right? And if we fall below almost 15%, we're in the detrimental phase. So sebum is protecting you as a barrier. It's also moisturizing the skin surface as well as hair. There is in sebum uh, cholesterol, waxy esters, um, glycerin, also fatty acids. And the sebum is traveling also with dead cells, right? Like keratin. Now keratin in this diagram is just going up to the surface, mixed in with the sebum, and that looks really normal. And that's what should be happening. And this happens typically pre-puberty. So where it gets tricky is when there is a blockage in the hair follicle. The hair follicle is not only the passageway that sebum travels up in those dead cells, but it also is where the hair grows out of. Now, when there's an accumulation of the sebum and dead cells right there in this white area that you see underneath the skin, that's where we get a white head or a microcomedo. When that skin is removed, melanin is oxidized, and then we end up with something called a blackhead. So that's where we get blackheads from. So this is where microorganisms start to play a role. The propione bacterium naturally occurs in the body, but they become an issue where the accumulation of that sebum is. They love lipid-rich areas, and so they initiate an inflammatory response, and their accumulation causes pus to start to uh, form in that dermis layer, and that's where we get pustules from. Now, when this inflammation becomes really serious is where we get um, cystic acne. It's when um, that pus starts to touch onto the nerves uh, or the nerve root deep within the, the dermis and it's becoming very painful. So you see that on the far right hand side. I'm showing you all the different accumulations of uh, pus in that area. Um, and when you have deep scarring deep within the dermis, 
that's where you end up with ice picks or scarring. All right, friends, so hopefully that wasn't too difficult for you, but I definitely wanted to show you there is different um, phases that we go through and different types of acne that ends up happening to us. Pre-puberty, everything seems normal as usual, but as soon, soon as there's hormonal changes, especially in men, um, when they come and cross into puberty, there's, a, there's those androgens, testosterone starts causing the sebaceous gland to produce a lot of sebum. So overproduction of sebum is an issue. It could be genetics or hormonal. There's um, hyperkeratinization where you have an accumulation of dead cells happening. There's also an accumulation of bacteria happening. Um, in another phase of having acne, there's cystic acne, there's postules. You see, so I'm showing you all the different phases because if you have information, it is really going to increase your buying experience so that you're buying um, what necessitates the type of acne that you have. Now, I know that most dermatologists, when you have cystic acne, will give you isotretinoin. That is really to prevent the sebaceous gland from producing a lot of sebum. Um, but not everybody needs tretinoin. Not everybody needs Accutane. Um, but what I'm getting at is this is the reason why I really stress going to a dermatologist so that they can get to the root of things and why it's important for us not to just grab the next best thing that's thrown at us when we don't understand what we're actually dealing with. So I am here for you. Again, the discussion continues. Leave your questions down in the comment section below. Give this a thumbs up. Definitely share it. Hopefully, if you're new and you haven't subscribed, that you will give me an opportunity to um, give you valuable information and to love on you a little bit. So definitely, please subscribe. I love my subscribers. You know I'm here to give you truth and I'm here to grow with you and us evolve together as a community. So I will see you guys on Friday for Sean K's Beauty Bar. And uh, if you want me to talk more acne and acne treatments, definitely leave that down below. Um, I can recommend some cleansers to really help you fight against Propione bacterium. Um, but you know, again, just leave it down below and, and I will look at your comments and I will, um, I will, uh, you know, figure out where I want to put those questions. Uh, if it's something we should cover here on the platform that all of us can evolve from, or if it's just me and you one on one, one on one, sorry, one on one working through it. Anyway, I love you all so much. Going to do some hiking before the sun goes down. Remember, love yourself, be kind to one another, and stay active, eat right. That also helps to minimize acne. I will see you all in my next one. Ciao for now.